This afternoon, real fun afternoon. So many people uh, coming in. And for the first time, I got to meet Bernadette Boylan from uh, the Children's Bureau Family Foster Care and Adoption. So first of all, welcome. Lovely to meet you. Lovely and thank you for you. S- uh, so much for coming by on such a hot day. Uh, we do have AC. So if it gets too hot, you let me know. Um, let's talk about, first of all, I don't even know if our listeners know exactly what the Children's Bureau is. So if you can explain that, first of all, we'll, let's start there. Okay. Um, in, in simple terms, Children's Bureau has been around since uh, 1904. 113 years and counting. Uh, we're a nonprofit um, child abuse prevention organization. We're committed to children and families. Is there a difference between being um, a foster parent and adoptive parent? Because I, I know sometimes people, uh, I, some friends of mine foster, but then they ended up adopting. Mm-hmm. Is that the normal course? Uh, that people usually go into, or uh, does it happen all different ways? Um, Well, we certainly have families that want to just foster, but the majority of our families come to us because they want to build their family. Mm -hmm. Um, So they ultimately want to adopt. Uh, But if if you're coming along and decide you want to come with Children's Bureau, you're going to be um, basically certified to do both, foster and adopt. So what it means is if you just want to help a child out until they can be reunified with their birth family or whatever family member they're, they're meant to go back to, you would just be fostering. Ultimately, every child needs a, a permanency plan. So if they're unable to reunify with their family, then we would need a family to adopt them. And that's what an adoptive family would do. This has to be heart-wrenching at times, yes? Yes, it is. And and I have been doing it a very long time, but it still comes down to one thing. These are children who have been exposed to abuse and neglect and trauma, and they've had a lot of loss in their life. And they're really needing a family to care for them. We're going to talk about qualification. We're going to talk about training. If you are the least bit interested in uh, fostering adoption, I urge you to stick around. I'm going to take a short break. We're going to check traffic and we're going to come back and talk to Bernadette about all of the questions you may have regarding any of this. And, And as we're talking right now, I'm actually learning things that I never knew before. So there's a lot of information to cover. Uh, I urge you to come back. We just have to check traffic because we do that. Beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. On the 8s every 10 minutes right here on your hometown station until 7 o'clock. Then it's all about the Dodgers. We become your official Dodger, Santa Clarita Dodger station. So northbound side of the 5 looks pretty decent so far, believe it or not. We had an earlier problem at the 118, and it kind of held traffic back a little bit. So if you're on the 405 and you merged onto the 5 freeway, you'll notice it's a little bit better than usual. I am hearing, though, we might have a crash on the northbound 5 at Roxford, possibly uh, blocking the carpool lane. It does need to be confirmed, CHP, just getting word of this. We also might have trouble Castaic Road at Fantastic Lane. There might be police activity there right over at the gas station. Castaic at Fantastic Lane. Southbound side of the 5 of the 405. Earlier traffic hazards been cleared. Now that southbound 5 is heavy from Rye Canyon. Heavy, heavy, heavy into Valencia Boulevard. That's traffic on your hometown station. K-H-T-S. It is 520. I'm Tori. We're talking with Bernadette Boylan from the Children's Bureau Family Foster Care and Adoption. Um, I have so many questions because uh, I really didn't know the difference uh, other than the obvious difference uh, that we probably all know about fostering versus being an adoptive parent. Who qualifies uh, for something like that, Bernadette? Who qualifies? people and I think a lot of people don't realize that they actually could do it so um, some of the basic is you know if you're at least 21 years old um, you can be single you can be married um, you can coexist with somebody um, you have to like children I mean that's just common sense and you have to have some flexibility in your schedule to meet the needs of the children whether it's them going to the doctor therapist school um, and and just overall you have to be willing to do five things. I I can simplify it to that. And that is if you're willing to protect and nurture children, if you're willing to um, meet their developmental needs and address any delays they may have, they may not. But 
some of our kids do need therapy. Some of our kids do need special services. Um, most importantly, are you willing to support the relationship with their birth family? Um, they still have a birth family. So you need to be able to support that. That's now see that's where it gets really heart wrenching, uh, because uh, you've got to divide your time. You've got to be understanding, and you have to know that they might have some love for yet another family who just can't take care of them. And that's to me that is that's got to be difficult for someone like you to see stuff like that develop. Yes, and and the reality of it is is. Even if the children end up to move on to permanency for adoption, they still came from somewhere. They right. have a birth mom. They have a birth father. They have a grandmother, an aunt, uncle, siblings. Most of our children have siblings. So we're looking for families that can maybe take a sibling set and, and, and be open to the fact that, you know, these children may stay, but they may, the whole goal here is to reunify with birth family. So you need to be able to support that relationship while the children are with you. And then the last couple things we're looking for families to do um, as part of their qualification is to basically encourage and maintain relationships intended to last a lifetime. And you're doing all of this as a, as a member of a professional team. Yes, I'm a supervisor. Yes, there's a social worker who's gonna be working with the resource family. We can't do it without them and they can't do it without us. Do you find that the rules have changed over the years because uh, you were saying who qualifies, my question was who qualifies, and one thing you said was, well, you can be single. Years and years ago, that was not the case. Mm -mm. That was uh, frowned upon. If you were single, uh, chances are that wasn't going to come your way. What changed over the years? How did we evolve? I mean, I'm glad that we did. Yes. I'm glad that we did because there are so many loving people who are there financially, emotionally, ready to do this mm -hmm. and can, can provide for a child. So I'm so glad that we've evolved and changed the rules. But when did, did you actually see that happening? Well, I mean, the evolution is based on actually kind of a sad situation, and that is the need for, for families. There are too many children in the system and not enough families. I mean, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. the, the, the county, Department of Children and Family Services, are responsible for determining whether a child can remain safe with their birth family. It's at that point, if they decide, no, they can't stay here, they're calling an agency like ours and right. saying, please, please. We, we get at least 30 calls a day from the county asking us for families. We have to say, no, we don't have enough. That number to me is staggering. Does that? I, I, I mean, you said it. You 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 said it just like you know. That's your that's your work day. Mm -hmm. You get thirty calls a day. For me, hearing that number that blows my mind. Thirty calls a day. That and and you cannot accommodate everyone. No, we may be able to accommodate one or two of those calls. Maybe. Some days we're not able to accommodate any because we don't have families or the families we do have don't have the appropriate space. So can you imagine us getting a call? We have a newborn waiting to be discharged from the, the hospital and we have to say no. There has to be. Uh, there. So what happens in that case? What happens? Well, the county will keep calling around. They'll either call another agency mm -hmm. like ours, because okay. there's plenty of them out there, or they'll try to find um, one of their own county homes. That just breaks my heart. I had no idea the numbers mm -hmm. were so big. What can we do to help? What can we do? Well... I'm here because I would really like to invite everybody to our next info meeting. We have info meetings every month, but here in Santa Clarita, we hold ours at College of the Canyons, mm -hmm. and we have one coming up this Saturday, which I do believe is June 24th, and uh, that's at 10 a.m., and really it's an opportunity. It's the first step for people to come and kind of just hear more of what I'm already talking about. It's There's no obligation. You show up. We answer your questions. We share what we're looking for and what what is needed and at that point if you're interested you can take an application if you if and but we really need you to come to the info meeting it's basically a big Q&A and it'll answer a lot of the basic questions for you is is this right for you because it's not right for everybody but you don't know 
unless you come, because there's a lot of myths about fostering and adopting. A lot of uh, stereotypes, a lot of things that I had not known. We were talking off the air, and a lot of things that we were talking about, uh, because quite honestly, it, it might not be represented. You know, <laughs> the, I think the things that we know about this process are lifetime movies. Mm. And do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. And so, uh, you know, we kind of, that's our, that's, that's our go-to. Mm -hmm. And so we don't really know the what's behind it. We don't know the real stuff. And that's what you're saying. You really need to come on Saturday, Saturday, this Saturday for, uh, for the info meeting and really know what you're, you're, you're uh, going to do and how you're going to do it and what qualifies you. And if it's right for you, um, there is a website, there's a phone number and some, and a website. Let's give all this information out to make sure if you're listening right now and you've been wanting to do this, you know, someone else who's wanting to do this, the numbers, I, I, I had no idea um, the numbers uh, that you were talking about just breaks my heart. Um, so if you can, if you're willing, if uh, if it's right for you, the website is allforkids.org? Yes. All for kids. Now it's the number four, allforkids.org. There's also a phone number. If you're sitting at your desk right now and you're listening to this, it is 661-208-4212. 661-208-4212. Uh, go to the website. That's probably the easiest, allforkids.org, and find out how you can get involved if this sounds like something uh, you would be interested in and it could possibly help because we have to... Uh, we have to find homes for these uh, kids, and and when I I don't mean a house, I mean a home. We need a we need families. We need families. Yeah, um, a, a home doesn't have feelings, but families do. Exactly. And these children do. And we're talking about children from newborn to eighteen. So, if you think, oh, I don't want to do the baby thing, I don't want to change diapers. Okay, well, we there's two year olds, there's four year olds, there's ten year olds, and usually those ten year olds come with a couple siblings or maybe one sibling. So if you have the space and some of these things we've already talked about, look into it. Look into it because there's a child waiting. There is, and we need the help. We need the help. Bernadette, it was a pleasure talking to you. Bernadette Boylan from the Children's Bureau Family Foster Care and Adoption. Please think about going to the info meeting. It is this Saturday at COC. At COC in the um, Diane Van Hook Center. I mean, she has her own little building, and it's at 10 a.m. But if you need more information or directions, please uh, call that number, 661-208-4212. Ask for Lucy, and she will give you the info. Excellent. Let's get some families. Yes. Let's, let's, get, let's get this started. <laughs> Bernadette, pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome back at any time. Thank you.